Welcome, it's Simon from Chameleon Mode. Today we are going to be talking about what is an anti-detect browser and what is the best anti-detect browser for 2024. And you might already have a bit of an idea what I'm going to recommend, um, but we'll get to why we're gonna be recommending that in just a second. First, let's talk about what is an anti-detect browser. Now, an anti-detect browser is your layer of protection between your computer's identity and the website that you're visiting. So it's not enough anymore to have a proxy or a VPN. It used to be 10 years ago that if you had a proxy and you just changed the proxy, that would be enough. But with the advent of tech, the tech that we're using right now, WebRTC, that allows people to talk in real time through the web, WebRTC, real time communication, that was one of the first blocks that is still something that can show or leak your true identity. So an anti-detect browser is a software that sits on your computer and manages a set of browsers, providing that set of browsers with a complete unique identity, including way past the proxies, way past WebRTC. We're talking about everything from the device enumeration, down to the type of um, canvas fingerprint that you have, down to the WebGL fingerprint, down to your font fingerprint, your user agent, and a lot more. Right? So your system gives off a fingerprint. The combined fingerprint of the software that you have gives it a unique ID. Now that might put you in a category with other people, it might not, but what it does is put you in a category. Now, if you're managing multiple accounts and you're just using a proxy and you're wondering why you're getting blocks here and there or you're using a VPN and wondering why, stop using that because it's not doing anything. All it's doing is masking your IP address. It's still showing exactly who you are. It's giving the website a complete understanding of exactly who you are no matter how many browsers you open up, no matter how many times you log in and log out of a browser. Now, the other thing that is very key about an anti-detect browser and what an anti-detect browser does very, very well is manages your sessions. So it creates a digital identity for you. It's not a good idea to just manage your profiles, your client accounts using a spreadsheet and then logging in with your system browsers and having to log in and log out using multiple instances, whatever they might be. It, it's, it removes the footprint that you want to show. And it's very important to show social sites that you are interacting with other websites on the web for multiple reasons. Number one, it shows that you're real. Number two, it makes the money. Because when you click onto a website that has a certain pixel on it from a certain network that's out there, many of them do this, and you click onto their website, they, write, they realize, ah, you just came from this website of mine, and that's a real website, and I'm gonna now show you ads. So now that profile now becomes monetizable and they're starting to make money out of you as a profile, which is a very good thing for them. So it makes everyone happy. It gives you a digital footprint that you could rely on. It gives you a digital footprint that is totally unique. So each one of the, each time you open up a browser, the way it should appear is that you appear 100% unique to the other browsers that you're using on your system. And that's what an anti-detect browser does. It takes the proxy, it uses the proxy, which is the first line of defense, you can say. And then after the proxy is clean and it's verified and it's a good proxy, do not use data center proxies, only use residential proxies, DME or PM or comment below for the recommended proxy providers. I don't wanna get into that in this video, but it's very important to have the best proxies. Now, the next stage after that is, as I mentioned, the tech that leaks who you really are from all sorts of different directions, using your browser to identify who you really are. So what an anti-detect browser does is it takes each browser instance and it makes it completely unique. So enough talking about that. So let's open up Brave here. Okay, so now this is my system Brave. I don't have any plugins or extensions that are going to mess with the identity or the authenticity of this browser. 
and it's coming up unreliable. This is not spoofed by us, by any anti-detect browser, not spoofed by chameleon mode. This is a normal browser instance. Now, another eye-opener, and we're going to come back to this in just a second. Okay, so we're opening up System Firefox. We're going to go to the same site, right? And we're also going to see that the score coming from an out-of-the-box Firefox edition is unreliable. And the reason for that is because Firefox and Brave are very serious about privacy. They want to make sure that they're masking certain things like your canvas fingerprint. Now, they mask it a certain way, and it does come up like this. It comes up as a spoofed fingerprint, but it doesn't come up as a fake fingerprint. So you still have the realness of a real fingerprint, but just that it's of a real browser, just that it's being spoofed. And there are differences, you know, there are fingerprints that are spoofed in a terrible way. And when you go and you check them on certain sites, it will come up as a fake fingerprint altogether. So this is not fake, this is spoofed. So now let's look at the hardware and how they're doing it compared to how Brave are doing it. And what Brave are doing is they're actually spoofing the WebGL, the canvas and the audio, but they're not spoofing the client recs, okay? WebGL is turned off with Firefox, so they're not even bothering spoofing. They're spoofing the canvas, not spoofing audio, not spoofing client recs out of the box. So these are two things that are very easily going to be identifying you. So if you're just using your system browser and you're, you know, you're, you've got a certain level of security there, but you know, if you're managing client accounts and you want to keep everything absolutely separate or you're doing affiliate marketing or whatever else it is that you're doing online, digital marketing wise, and you need to keep everything in separate areas of the internet, different markets, different niches, you don't want anything re really connected, then this could be a fingerprint. Okay, now let's take a look at Chameleon Mode, the anti-detect browser, and how we are showing the fingerprints in, 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 in Chrome. So before we do this, actually, let's take a look at Chrome, the system Chrome. So, so, so this is the system Chrome. And as you can see, the system Chrome is trustworthy. And the reason the system Chrome is trustworthy is because it's not doing anything. It's not spoofing anything. It's showing everyone exactly your system hardware. And this is our system hardware, WebGL. This is actually the system. This is the system. This is the audio, and this is the client recs. These are all the identifying signals that are being sent out that are showing websites that are looking for this who you are. Right? So now the Chrome browser managed by Chameleon, it also comes up trustworthy, 100% trustworthy in all areas. And if we look at the hardware, this is where anti-detect browsers come in. And this is what an anti-detect browser is and what they do, right? Is we look at the hardware and the device enumeration here is all 100% unique, as you can see. So, you know, we, we're sitting on the same computer. We're in a different time zone. I'm in a totally different time zone than this. This is all getting automatically changed on the back end and this is all automatically getting changed on the back end everything is unique so it provides you as you can see with a unique fingerprint a unique hash of you so this browser has got a completely unique identity to the browser next to it it's in the same time zone but it's got a completely different identity and it probably is in a different location see where this one is located. Uh, this is also a Springfield IP. This is a slightly different one, two IPs that are close to each other. So that's, that's why they're the same there. Springfield, Massachusetts, but obviously I'm not in Springfield, Massachusetts. It's showing that everything is nice and clean. Back down to the hardware, everything is unique. And the system hardware, just to compare on my actual system hardware, is also totally unique from the ones managed by Chameleon Mode. Now, that is what an anti-detect browser does and how it gives you an extra layer of security and anonymity above and beyond proxies and VPNs. Any questions, let me know in the comments below. Now, before I end, I just want to talk very quickly about 
the best anti-detect browser in 2024. Now, we've been around for quite some time. We launched in 2015 under a different brand, rebranded to Chameleon Mode in 2019. And we've been here improving upon our system ever since. And we are managing system browsers. This is our interface. We're also the easiest to use. There's no learning curve. Very simple to open and click and click a profile. And as soon as you click a profile, what that does in the back end is it spins up a completely unique identity for the computer. Now, everything, every time you open up a Chrome or a Firefox or a Brave, with Edge being added in the coming weeks, you're going to have a completely unique identity in exactly in the same way as I showed you over here. So there's no more settings that you need to do. No more settings that you need to do aside from add your proxy configuration, whichever proxies you want. Now we do provide and recommend the best proxies, which again I said I will recommend and provide for you. That's generally after you have chameleon mode, but if you want to know, do comment below and I'll send you a message or a link or some sort or I'll let you know who they are. And this is simply just fill in whatever information you want related to the profile. Now, Chameleon Mode also does something special. So we're going to open up. We're going to open up the. Uh, one second. We're going to open up the instance where we was before in the profiles, and we have these two browsers open, but they, we're not sure where they are. They're actually when one is here and one is okay. So we've got one next to each other. So we're going to click this open. We're going to go into Chameleon Mode. So what this does very quickly, and I'm not going to do that because I've got already got two browsers open and I'm recording. So if I clicked on this, it would open up those two browsers immediately. If I click that, it would open up these two profiles in Firefox. And if I click Brave, it would open up these two profiles in Brave for me. But if I click this, it opens up this little chameleon mode button. And I can then launch any browser instance that I want and get access to the login information for this profile very, very easily by clicking this button. And if I want to just get the browser very quickly, then I just simply need to click it over there. And you're always in control. It always highlights which browser you're using. As you can see, this is highlighted in green. So we, we know that we're in this profile. So you can quickly click that profile information, get access to it very, very quickly. And the same thing, as you can see now, it knows we're in this profile. And if you need to log in or sign up to something, you can get access to that as well. Now we've got some awesome AI updates that are coming that are going to be able, that's going to help you create um, profiles and personas. So you don't have to worry about populating anything in any event. So we have got a roadmap that is probably worth checking out. I'll leave the link below the video. And if you have any questions or comments about anything that I discussed in this video, please do leave a comment below and let me know. Talk to you soon. See you in the comments.